morning. Thank you all very much for being here. I am Nassau County Executive Laura Curran, and I am, just want to give a special thanks to the co-chairs of the OCAP Task Force, Legislator Celia Bino and Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder, who are here with us this morning. Thank you for your hard work, and thank you for being here. We also have Victor Chiapa, who is the father of Natalie Chiapa, and we'll be hearing from him later. You may know that Natalie, 11 years ago, uh, a young girl from Massapequa died of a heroin overdose, 11 years ago, sort of the beginning of this epidemic that's hit Nassau County. And uh, Victor has been a tireless champion. He has been an amazing partner, and he has shown incredible courage. And I uh, just want to thank him very, very much for his advocacy and for being here. Thank you. It means a lot to us. Members of the task force are here as well. Is James, James, I didn't see James Kennedy. J Legislator Kennedy has been a member of this task force. Pamela Kelly Pincus, who is director of the Office of Alternative Prosecutions and Resources at the DA's office. We have also from the DA's office, Renee Feichter, who is assistant district, uh, district attorney and current chair of the Nassau County District Attorney's Heroin Task Force. That's Madeline Singus' Heroin Task Force. We have Mary Faldich, who is Appeals Court Senior Assistant District Attorney. So we have a good representation from the DA's office. Omira Perez, Director of Community Services at the County's Office of Mental Health, Chemical Dependency, and the Developmentally Disabled. We have Dr. Jennifer Morrison, Superintendent of the New Hyde Park Garden City Park School District. Keith Scott, who is the Director of Education at the SAFE Center. Steve Chasman, Executive Director of LICAD, that's the Long Island Council on Alcoholism. And Jamie Bogenchance, who is Executive Director of the YES Counseling Center. So this is a good group. It's a, it's a, not a huge group, but it's a very comprehensive group of stakeholders, crucial stakeholders from all fields, medical, school, social work, government, law enforcement, prosecution to give me a snapshot of what we are facing right now and to look to the future of what we need to continue this fight. Like many municipalities across the nation, Nassau County is engaged in litigation against pharmaceutical manufacturers and distributors for causing the opioid crisis. We will pursue this litigation vigorously. We need to fund services for those devastated by the opioid crisis. So we will use the proceeds from any successful litigation to remedy the lasting and lingering, lasting and lingering effects of the opioid epidemic. This report serves, will serve as a roadmap for what needs to be done and what resources are needed for the future. The epidemic has been costly, costly in human life. It's destroyed families. It's destroyed communities. This is going to be costly for years and years to come, but the emotional cost is immeasurable. The opioid crisis has hit Nassau County hard, and thanks to the leadership of Police Commissioner Ryder and DA Singus, our law enforcement and health providers, we are making progress. I really want to thank the hardworking men and women of law enforcement, of the DA's office, of our police medics, of our, the women, men and women in our social services and all of our nonprofit and for-profit treatment providers as well for being great partners in this. At the beginning of 2018, we launched our Operation Natalie, which is a comprehensive campaign focused on treatment, enforcement, and education. As I mentioned before, it's named after Natalie Chiapa, who died of a drug overdose 11 years ago. We went through Operation Natalie into hard-hit communities with information, with education, yes, obviously with enforcement, but also with treatment options. We've boosted our 516-227-TALK substance abuse hotline to ensure that it runs 24-7 and is fully staffed to provide referrals and to support residents in need. And as the report indicates, as this report indicates, we need to do more. NASA has also formed a vital partnership with Mary Haven's New Hope Crisis Center, and this is in large part thanks to um, the work of uh, District Attorney Singus, to give opioid users access to around-the-clock treatment. Treatment will continue to be essential in the future. So in order to truly defeat this crisis, we must address the root causes. We have to understand the tr true cost of this crisis in its full cycle 
and we have to address long-term implications. And that's what this report, and it's going to be online shortly, that's what this report shows us. So to talk about more specific findings of the report and what this roadmap shows us, I would like to turn it over first to the co-chair of the OCAP Task Force, and that's Legislator Sila Bino. Thank you, County Executive. I'd like to first start by thanking the OCAP Task Force Committee members for their tireless work on this important report. And in addition to all of the support that we received from administration within the police department to comprise this report. This report is very telling. It tells the story of the crisis that we are facing here in Nassau County. It talks about the enforcement eff efforts. It talks about the treatment and the recovery efforts. And I, I, most importantly, I think what it delves into is the preventative measures that this county can take moving forward. We know now from research that trauma is a central focus in which we need to pay attention as we develop and we preempt the tra trajectory of those that might experience trauma as it leads to their adulthood. We know that young people who suffer, whether it be a trauma to which happens in their family, death, dying, whether the family has had a, a loss of a family member, a parent, we know that trauma leads young people, unfortunately, to look to self-medicate and in many times turns to drugs. And we know that we have to preempt their trajectory. We know that now that adverse childhood experiences have been linked to drug use and also other tragic lifestyle changes. And so we, as a committee, have looked to include legislation that would require that Nassau County assist school districts to have mental health first aid offered within to, into the schools. We know that this legislation would assist our uh, teachers and our administrators who are on the first line that are essential to know how to identify where somebody's in trauma and be able to assist in providing resources and in some cases de-escalate what they might be experiencing so that we don't see tragic events play out and we don't see opioid addiction become continue to be a catalyst for their suffering. So we ask that Nassau County Executive Law Curran, our Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder, to consider using asset forfeiture money, consider using all tools that are available to this county to assist all of those on the front lines and be able to remediate this horrible, horrible tragedy of opioid addiction throughout Nassau County. Thank you. Good morning. So the report that you've all heard, first of all, I want to thank the county exec for giving us this opportunity to dive into this and give you a real good look and understanding of what's going on. I want to thank my co-chair, Legislator Bino, who's worked hard with me again getting this report done. But look at the team behind here. This team, made of educators, prevention people, uh, awareness, um, substance abuse, places like LICAD and, and the Yes Council, and then the analyst that is also behind us, Sergeant Craig Crowley. This crew came together and met day in and day out to get this report done, and I can't thank them enough for the work that we've put into it. This document will give you a historic perspective so you understand where we came from, how we got here. It'll give you a current perspective, and it'll also give you a future, a future path that we think if we take we can get ourselves out of this horrific addiction uh, known to us as heroin and our opiate crisis here in Nassau County. No longer can we talk the talk. It's time to walk the walk. And that's what this report does. I urge you all to read this report when it goes online on the county's website. Understand that, that the report, will, it's 55 pages long. It will give you details, it will give you statistics, and it will also give you options for your family if you're in that world and you need recovery, where you can go to help get treatment. But more importantly, the mag what we talk about in this paper is prevention. 
We got to get to the preventive side of things so we don't end up where we are here today. And you just heard legislator by no talk about trauma. There's two pieces of legislation in this, in this book that we want to put forward. The first is about trauma and how we can hopefully get in that preventive mode. The second is when we're already there, legislator uh, James Kennedy put forward that he wants to uh, mandate 72-hour hold in our hospitals. And I'll give you an example. Two weeks ago, a 20-year-old male here in Nassau County overdosed. Our police responded. They issued Narcan. They got him into the ambulance. Our police medics took him to the hospital. Three hours later, because the hospital cannot mandate his stay, he walked out. Four hours later, we were back at the house with a needle in his arm, and he died. We failed him. The system failed him. We have to do better as a society to protect our kids when we've gone too far and did not get the preventive message out there. So I, I, that piece of legislation of the 72-hour hold, Legislator Kennedy couldn't be here, is an important piece along with the trauma. Preventive and also then getting to how we're going to handle it when we're there. The second part that I want to talk to you about is I met Vic Siapa over 11 years ago when his daughter died. At that time, we as a police department promised him that we would not forget his daughter. We would not forget what happened to Natalie. And why Natalie? Well, I'm going to read you something. I asked him to write me a testimonial that I can put in here. And him and his wife sat down and spoke to me on the phone back and forth. And Vic and I speak at least twice a month. And I want to read to you what he wrote down on this paper. To those who do not know our daughter, Natalie Siapa, she's just a statistic. A high school cheerleader, honest student, singer. One day she wrote a poem laminating the use of drugs by a friend. The next, she was the addict. Too many, she is just the first to bring awareness about heroin's grip on the teens of Long Island, the first to have laws made in her name in an attempt to save lives, but not the first child lost. Who is Natalie? Why was her death such a great tragedy? Why did she make everyone finally take notice? Because she's everyone's child. They look at the picture and they saw the all-American team. There's a full-page letter in here that Vic and his wife wrote. And I started to tear up as I, wrote it, as I read it, and then I called Vic back, and I asked him to be here today. So I'd like to introduce Natalie's dad, Vic Siapa. Hey, everybody. Uh, heroin ruined a beautiful child, and it has ruined many kids. But the point is, this team, many of whose names I don't even know, I want to thank from the bottom of my heart. My wife and I have been through hell, but things are finally turning around. We got miles to go, but we've made a, a, amazing breakthroughs. The task force, just the legislation, I can't thank everybody enough. The point is, Natalie's looking down, finally seeing something truly getting done. And uh, if you have suspicions, parents, you got to look into it hard. Your kids' moods change. They're not as clean as they used to be. They don't care about things. Man, you got to look into that. We didn't look into it hard enough because we just figured she was burning herself out, working as hard as she did to be the perfectionist she always was. She is everybody's kid. She was a perfect kid. Heroin will destroy anybody who tries it. There is no turning back. Your kids have got to be educated. We need more transparency from the schools. Natalie's law must be followed. Parents need to know when there's an, uh, there's an opioid, uh, uh, when any kind of opioid thing happens at a school, parents need to be notified. And again, maybe that's already being covered. More has to be done, but guys, thank you so much because we're seeing some positivity and some light at the end of the rainbow, but we got miles to go. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Laura. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. Vic, thank you very much. You know, I, I don't want to sound trite when I say this because I really do mean it. I, I, I hope that you don't think that Natalie's death is in vain. No, I know it's not. And I hope that you take some courage that we who are here now are taking action. And, and we're going to do everything we can to hold those responsible accountable as well. So thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for your, your willingness to speak about this, because I know it's not easy. So we're very, very grateful to you. And, and I just also want to echo, I'm very thankful to this entire task force for your hard work. You turn this around in a nice amount of time. And, um, you know, let's look for some good results coming into the future. So happy to take any questions from the press. 
So I will. I would like to turn it over to um, Sila. Would you like Sila or Patrick? Would you like to talk about key findings? I mean, but basically, it, just to give you an overview, the key findings are you know monetarily what this costs, what we've done up till now, what, what the historical you know uh, what has happened to get us to this point, and then what's need. What are we doing now? What steps are we taking now? And then what do we need going into the future? And it lays all of that out very well, I think. But if you want to get more into it, okay. So if you look at every one of our police uh, overdoses, our response, we send a police officer. Then from the police officer, there's a second officer. Then there's the police medics. Then there's a follow-up by detectives. Then if, God forbid, it's a homicide, our homicide squad shows up. Then there's transportation to the hospital. Then there's follow-up by narcotics to do the investigation. In there, it labels, it'll show you the exact cost of what it's cost us so far. And that's only from the law enforcement side. You're not even hearing from the, the cost from the medical, and as you, the report that came out a couple of weeks ago gives that number that it's in the country what it's cost us, the opioid crisis. But there's a family that made billions of dollars selling this opiates on the streets, billions of dollars. And they knew what they were selling was going to cause a, a worse addiction than what was going on. You can't take one pill, it's going to spread out through the course of the day when you were taking four during the day. That caused these kids to take four pills, which were more potent, and they did it four times as, as worse, causing this addiction. You know, the other thing that's covered is we've seen the evolution of the epidemic, starting from the pills, going to heroin, and now with these new drugs, these synthetic opioids like fentanyl, and that are harder to combat because they're much more potent. It covers all of that as well. All right, we're good? Thank you.